Welcome to Soma. This is a sci-fi horror game made by Frictional Games, which you might know as the people behind Amnesia the Dark Descent and the Penumbra series, which are easily some of my favorite horror games of all time. I really love Frictional Games and I'm so excited to play this. So let's just jump right into it, although before I do, I do want to mention that if you'd like to play this game for yourself, you'll find some more information on how you can do so in the description. Alright, let's just start a new game. Uh, I'm going into this almost completely blind. I've played for no more than just a couple minutes just to make sure the game settings are set correctly, and that is it. Are you okay, Simon? I think you're bleeding. Oh, that, that's nothing. It's just my brain can't stop bleeding from the accident. Here, take this. No, that, that's for later, for the scan. It's green. Ashley, I need to tell you something. Simon, please don't make this weird. No, no, it's not like that. Why now? Who's David Munchie? Why is there never enough time? For what? I'm up. Hi, Simon Jarrett? Yeah, that's me. My name is David Munchie. We spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, just a bad dream. Are, are we still on for today? Yeah, that's why I'm calling. I wanted to remind you to drink the tracer fluid I sent you. It'll help me capture a better image of the damages. Don't worry, I, I, I got it somewhere. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you in a couple of hours then. Okay, see you soon. So I know from some previews, and, and also from what Frictional Games have talked about with Soma, that a big part of what they're trying to do with Soma is, the tracer fluid. is play with the idea of memory and identity. So I'm going to try to really pay attention to what's going on with memory and identity and things like that, and try to really think about it, because I know it's going to be important. Like that dream I just had, it, it, looked like, it looked like he was having a dream of an accident that did actually happen, and he was imagining himself... Like trying to convince the other person about the accident. Tracer fluid. Where are you? Like trying to convince them that the accident was going to happen, and trying to like put things into place, and yeah. Looks like the beginning is kind of a bit of a tutorial integrated in with the rest of the game. And once again, like all frictional games, they have a wonderful amount of interactivity. Open and close drawers. You can even pick up stuff. Oh, that sound design. Oh my god. The sound of that hitting the wood floor sounded so good. You can pick up items, move it closer, further away. You can rotate them around. For example, I can turn this cup upside down and put it on my nightstand like a rebel. Yeah. Also, somebody's playing some really loud music. Jeez. What time is it? Summer's coming. Hope it's a good one. This can't be real, right? Because I'm pretty sure the game takes place in some underwater research station. And this is obviously not underwater, so this this can't be real, I think. Let's get some lights on in here. God, this place just feels so real, so lived in, and so interactive. I love it. I'm not even joking when I say that I could probably spend this entire episode just messing around and touching everything in this room. I mean, I won't, but I could. Umbra della Serra Volterra. I have no idea what that means and I probably said it wrong. Oh, this thing really needs to be watered. Hey Simon! Jesse, you working this weekend or what? I knew there was something you were doing. Was it this weekend or next? Anywho, just shoot me a mail or something. Love you, miss you, mean it. End of messages. 
I swear, that guy has the memory of a goldfish. I even sent an email to remind him, didn't I? Memory, memory, memory. It's gonna be important, I know it. Robin McConnell, hooked. Oh my god, I could just spend so much time just reading everything in this apartment. Uh, looks like I can even actually read it? Or no? Oh, okay. Just kind of like shows you like subtitled kind of version of it. Mark and Diana Miller has finally caught a break. They've managed to save up enough money to take the family on that vacation to Hawaii they've been talking about for so long. But as the sun sets over Waikiki Beach that first day, Mark and Diana's paradise turns into a nightmare as swimmers are caught in thousands of thin strings stretching from somewhere below the waves. Slowly, swimmers are pulled screaming into the dark water. Desperate to get out of harm's way, their seven-year-old son, Charlie, is caught by that the vicious tendrils. Suspenseful, mystical, and absolutely terrifying hooked will pull you in. That sounds incredibly silly, but man, that cover art's creepy. Alright, so I'm looking for the tracer fluid. That is ostensibly my goal, but in reality my goal is to touch just touch everything. Like these ugly sunglasses, for example. I hope those break. Maybe I'll step on them on the way out. Stick. Ooh, that is a fancy DSLR camera. I guess he's a photographer? Yeah, look at that thing. It's a beautiful picture of a cup of tea. Little beetle. Hmm, that's really pretty. the Roman state inside the law? Political systems? Well, something. I wonder if the top of this chair rotates. I don't know. <laughs> this thing's cute. I love interacting with everything. Oh. Get well soon, love, Mom. Just a bunch of doodles. Hmm, the beach. Oh, I guess I'm... I guess my character is really into Robin McConnell? The person who wrote that, uh, the book? Form for the tracer fluid from the hospital. Or a prescription, I guess. <laughs> Her face. She looks not amused. the doctor. Neurograph session. Thank you again for participating in our research. The scan will be performed at the Pace Laboratories in Toronto. But since we are guests, our access is a bit unpredictable. I'll try to schedule a scan session for Saturday. I'll get back to you when confirmed. Hmm. So I guess they're testing out research on him. Or doing research with him. Description... 
Dear Mr. Jarrett, I'm happy to hear your headaches have become less frequent. Your latest tests show your brain is slowly recovering, uh, but it's still too early to tell how well it will adjust to the damage. The bleeding will continue over the coming months, at least, and you will need to come to the hospital a few times to drain the cavity to prevent the blood from building up pressure. Since excessive stress could be fatal, I have written you a prescription for... Prezozin to help you with your nightmares. Please read the instructions and medicate accordingly. Try to get a lot of rest and I will see you next week. Oh. I have to come to the hospital a few times to drain the cavity. It's going to keep bleeding. Over the coming months. God, that sounds so gross and disturbing. Can you imagine the thought? Just just think about the idea of your brain, your brain bleeding. Like slowly, slowly bleeding and needing to be drained. It's just the thought that right now as you sit, as you're going to the bathroom or as you're walking around, your brain is bleeding. Oh, that is so disturbing. Draft. Unsent. Oh, I forgot to hit send. Oh, I can actually send it. Jesse the Grimoire. Saturday off. Hi, Jesse. Since you probably forgot, here's me reminding you that I've got that doctor's appointment tomorrow, i.e. I'm not coming into work. This means you need to make sure you're actually on time to open up the store. And please unpack the boxes behind the counter. They're starting to become a workplace hazard. Also, books tend to sell much better if they are put on shelves where people are able to actually see them. Good luck. You'll need it. Well, I guess that's why I called. I never sent it. Better late than never. Oh, right click. There we go. I've been freed from my computery prison. Is there anything inside of this? One crumbled up paper? Is there something wrong with me if all I want to do is open up this window and just throw all my trash and, like, all of my worldly possessions outside? But the urge is so strong. God, this game is good looking. It feels just good to interact with everything. I want to roll down the toilet paper. Oh, please tell me the toilet flushes. Ho ho ho! Not only does it flush, but you actually have to move your mouse or controller, if you're using that, down to flush it. You actually have to do the motion. I can even put down the seat. Oh my god. This is amazing. The sound design is so good! They have perfectly gotten the sound of soap hitting hard surfaces. Jesus! Perfect! I'm sorry, it's gonna take me a while to actually get scared by this game, because I'm just too bewildered by how amazing it is. Oh! What's in the shower? Is there more soap? I don't want to keep the doctor waiting. I'll shower when I get back. Okay, fair enough. What does the toothpaste sound like? Even that sounds right, and different! Different from the soap! Oh my god. Does stuff make special sounds when it hits glass? Uh, not really. It's not really a very glassy sound, but whatever. Mapping Mines. Widely praised as one of the most comprehensive yet accessible texts about the anatomy of the human brain, its function, and our perception of consciousness. Find out how your brain is dependent on its body, why the brain is simply not a computer, and a multitude of other interesting facts that will make your head spin. This edition also includes two new chapters about the development of the brain and how it affects our behavior in different stages of our lives. Oh yes. The brain is going to be very important in this game. Consciousness identity. <laughs> Massive recoil. John Hugh is a corrupt cop working in Hong Kong. One day his life is turned upside down as he meets Amber, a mysterious foreigner who is kept prisoner by the Golden Dragon Triad. Get ready to go rogue, for it's time to go against the Triad, the police, and the supernatural forces of the underground. 
Get ready for massive recoil. Not authorized for sale. Right. Watching TV gives me headaches now. Thank you, brain. Hmm. Sounds unpleasant. Very unpleasant. Also, what a slob. <laughs> Pizza box and just some fries on the ground? Uh, let's turn on some lights in here. There we go. Oh, I can even hear the hum of the fridge. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. This game is beautiful. I love it. I don't even care if there's any horror. I don't care. Just give me an apartment to play in and I'm going to have so much fun. Look, I'm going to put those in the microwave. Because it's fun. I figure this guy's place is already, like... What's the word? Slo slovenly? Slo I don't know. It's already a complete mess. Why not make it worse? Remind Jesse, pick up meds, flowers for funeral. So I guess I the woman the that was in... Fast food. Should buy something healthier on my way home. So I guess the woman in the accident, she died. And I was lucky enough to survive. Let's just throw these glasses away. They're hideous. Got my keys. To me. Um. Because I can't actually open it. Oh well. Okay, so. Like, where's the tracer fluid? Because that's originally what I was looking for. I opened up all of these, right? Yep. Yep, not in there. Is it like hiding under the bed or something? Oh, I don't know if I opened these. There it is. Oh, there we go. Hold on, there's some other stuff around here. Some more blockbusters. The Ultimate Movie Magazine. Massive Recoil 2. Flawless Execution. Downtown accident kills young woman. Oh god, this is the accident. That killed her and left him with brain damage. Toronto. Yesterday, a driver distracted by her children ran a red light, causing her to blindside a car in the intersection of Bloor Street and Spadina Road. The mother and her children, traveling in a robust SUV, were left bruised but largely unharmed. The other party was less lucky. As the car crashed into the passenger side, Ashley Hall, 23, sustained devastating damages and suffocated from blood trapped in her lungs before the ambulance arrived. Her friend and driver, Simon Jarrett, 26, survived, but with complicated results believed to leave him with permanent brain damage. Driver of the SUV, whose name something, been released by police with an accident and practically unavoidable. Jeez. God, that's horrible. Suffocated from blood trapped in her lungs. Oh. Feels like milk, but the taste is like sucking on a penny. Ooh. All right, well, I guess that's it. I might be a slob, but at least I'm an energy conscious slob. Let's turn off the lights.
Do I need my shoes? No, nope, guess not. I guess I'm wearing them. choose to ignore it. Jesse. Hey, Simon. I got your email. Just wanted to wish you good luck and let you know I got you covered. Thanks. I should be able to come to the store after the scan. Don't sweat it. I got Matt and Chris helping me out. Matty from SNL? Uh, guess you didn't hear. He's coming in full time. Work in the comic section. That's Ashley's job. Yeah. Well, you know. Forget it. Not doing her any favors by leaving an empty spot. Not like she's coming back. Well, Good luck. Hope they find a way to reverse the whole, you know, dying thing. <laughs> dying thing? You're the worst support ever. <laughs> what should I say? I'll see you later, Jesse. Don't burn the place down while I'm gone. Over and out, buddy. Won't find me in a voting booth. All a big sound. I wonder if I chose not to answer the phone if something, I don't know, if that would have some significance in the story. Hello? Dr. Munchie? Um, what? This this is where they want to do the scan? In a place that isn't even finished with construction? Or is undergoing a renovation? Where is everyone? I thought this place would be busy. Well, at least the lights work. I'm kind of scared for my life now. This is creepy. And the painting of a little clown creature doesn't help. At least it's not a Stephen King clown. Well, this is Canada. I can tell because of the flag. I know. Astute observation. Oh, look at those skyscrapers. Man, it's amazing how big Frictional Games has gotten. I mean, if you think about Amnesia the Dark Descent, that game was made... I mean, it was made on a pretty tight budget, from what I understand, and not by that many people. And you can really tell, because of the limited amount of locations that it was set in, and the limited amount of assets. Like, a lot of it was just pretty, you know, relatively generic kind of castle stuff. And it never really changed all that much, for the most part. That was mostly it. But this just feels so, like, damn. They must have had a much bigger budget for this game. And, like, much more people working on it. You can really feel it. Just the amount of locations I've visited already. Just looking at, you know, just being able to look outside the windows and see the city. It's pretty amazing. Trial and error. Put your scalpel away, the brain can heal itself. The brain has an amazing transformative quality, a plasticity that allows it to compensate and even heal itself, explains Paul Berg, a graduate student in neuroscience at York University in Toronto. It is this quality that Berg and his colleague David Munchie, a student of computer science, are hoping to encourage. It's about getting the brain to do the right thing, and we hope to accomplish this with simple things like exercise, therapy, and light medication. But Munchie and Berg are not looking for a miraculous panacea. 
It's about finding the optimal treatment for each patient. They start out recording something called a... Nakajima Neurograph. It's like a picture that indicates direction, says Munchie. Instead of a static brain scan, the neurograph can tell us where your brain is going. Hmm. Damaged brain scan to produce computer model. Okay. So that's what this scan is about, trying to predict where my brain is going, whatever that means, so that they can make a specialized treatment for me. Hmm. Um, it's not a long forecast, it's about milliseconds, but with the right computer model, Berg and Munchie can then administer all kinds of treatments without risking actual harm to the real brain. We could try giving your brain an overdose of painkillers while running a marathon, suggests Berg. It's just a computer model. We're able to fail treating you a million times over, only to find the right way. And when they do find that optimal treatment, that's when they apply it to the real patient. It's still in the early stages but their project has caught the attention from Pace Laboratories, who has promised to assist them with both equipment and workspace. We are very fortunate to get all this support, says Berg. Now we just need to get out of the limelight and actually do the work. Interesting. That sounds amazing. Yeah, if you could scan a brain to the point where you have an accurate enough copy that you could then just perform... just perform trial runs and perform experiments on the model of the brain, then yeah... You could try all sorts of things, and a lot will fail, but it doesn't matter because you're not hurting anybody. Hmm. Scribblings. <laughs> Just gonna read their computer? <laughs> Why not? Paul Berg's email account. From David Munchie, scan now. Paul, where are you? We've got a few hours. I got hold of Simon Jarrett. Let's do this. I saw your laptop in the reception. Are you already here? Call me ASAP. Hmm, so Paul's MIA. From David Munchie. Hi, Paul. Talked to Pace about using the lab this week. I've managed to book the scanner for tomorrow morning and again on Friday. It's not a lot, but they said we could use the empty reception area as a kind of office. It would allow us to use their computers to run models, and also if a time slot opens up, we can get in there and use the scanner rig right away. I thought we could run some tests tomorrow. We could do a scan of each other to learn the equipment. It's supposed to be pretty easy. On Friday, I'm hoping Dr. Aaron Peake will send somebody over. She has a patient that was recently in a car crash. It should be interesting. Okay, so I'm like their first patient, basically. Hmm. Not sure if it's really great to be the first one in on uh, new medical research. I'd rather be the one that goes after, like, hundreds of people have done it and, like, the kinks have been worked out, you know? Sent email. Sent from Paul to David Munchie. We're locked out. I found some extra time in the lab today. Unfortunately, nobody told us about the code change. So I called security, talked to Professor Wei to have him vouch for our project, and finally got a hold of some honcho over at Pace's legal department that could re-grant us permission to use the lab. I'm not allowed to repeat the code in mails or texts, but I'll leave a note or something in case we forget. Ah. I'm gonna need to find it then, huh? In fact, did I just read it? Is it in here? 250... Zero what? What is that? 25017? There's like a line connecting zero. Well, it's only two combinations, can't be too hard. 2501, let's say? Even the lights, these individual lights can be turned on, even though they produce almost no light at all. That's still so cool. Don't tell me I can actually, like, 
get a cup of water. Well, not exactly, but that's almost as cool. Actually, maybe I can. Let's just pretend it has water in it. And let's drink it. Mmm. Mmm. Yummy water. Well, I guess first I should check and see whether this thing's even locked. This is the place, right? It must be. Let's just call Machi real quick. Great. Got his phone turned off. That's okay. I can figure this out. You know, if I went somewhere to get somebody to scan me, and then I had to rifle around in their papers and find the code to get in to this, like, partially constructed room, I'd start to get a little bit worried. Like, I'd probably just go back home. Alright, so 2501. Okay, it was a one. Run with shift, mm-hmm. This game is so good looking, and it runs so beautifully too. Rock solid 60 FPS. James. Monday. Is this mine? No, today's Saturday, right? I think it's Saturday. And none of those dates on that thing are Saturday. Hello? This place looks really high-tech. Dang. Wonder how much all this stuff costs. I don't even know what this is. Crunching tons of numbers. Scan calculation in progress. So did they already actually scan somebody? They're obviously running some sort of simulation or something. It's kind of weird that there's just a needle on this table. Don't think that's safe. I think you're supposed to unwrap the needle, use it, and then dispose of it. Guess these are probably like rendering farms or something of the sort to crunch all the numbers. A living person. Hey. Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. Simon Jarrett, right? Dr. Munchie? Well, it's uh, just Mr. Munchie, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Actually, you're helping me right now. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah. It's a study I'm doing with my colleague, Paul Berg. We hope to design a gentle way to work with brain reconstruction to help people like you. Oh, did you uh, take the tracer fluid? Yes. Yes, I did. Great. Well, we can start whenever you're ready. I really don't want to get scanned. You know what I feel like? I feel like they're going to scan my brain and they're going to take such a high quality copy of my brain and run it through such high quality simulations 
that I'm gonna be living through. Please, have a seat. Like living through the simulations that they're running. Like they're so real that they've created consciousness. Like if they can copy my brain so perfectly and actually like run my brain, is that any different from actual consciousness? Well, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Just get this out of the way. You are Simon Jarrett, correct? Right. Toronto, Canada, David Munchie. Born 1988, July 16th. Right. Flat neurograph, version 6. Good. All files in order. Will this hurt? It's just a scan. It'll hurt about as much as getting your picture taken. Indians thought cameras would steal their souls. Is that so? Well, let's hope they're wrong. <laughs> Ready? Say cheese. Mr. Munchie? Did something go wrong? This isn't funny. I, I'm not supposed to put myself in... This is kind of stressing me out. get here okay so now we're in the research station yep those are the diving suits it's blood bleeding to or from the chair Yeah, God, what if right after the scan, what if I've switched? What if I've switched to one of the computational models of my brain? A perfect copy made of my brain and I've switched over to a simulation. And this is one of the simulations, because he said, this is kind of stressing me out. What if they're testing the effects of stress on my brain? What if that's one of the simulations? Jesus. Unlock terminal from service console. That would be this. Build, shape, and optimize your Omni tool with fully customized tools and assistance. C cool. Do I have an Omni tool? No, I've got to insert it. Access, I guess. All right. Well, there's got to be an Omni tool somewhere around here. Leave that in there. Is that it right there? Oh.
clever, clever game designers. If you're stuck in the roof for too long, they make that happen so you know to break the glass. I see what you're doing. Smart. Well, you mean I can't break glass with a cup? Fine. How about a boot? Come on, I'm Canadian. Shouldn't this break glass? Isn't that what this game's all about? I'm so sorry for that pun. Break the lock if I want to get through there. God, the sound design is so good. Listen to that. This is unlocked now. Don't have to keep jumping through the window and risk cutting myself. Sounds like there's flies hanging around in there. I think it's been a while since anybody's done any maintenance. Whoa. Whoa. It's working better than expected. They're having a really hard time getting the doors open. Call Permaseal as many as you can, rather than take any chances. Roger. Did you cut off the factory floor? All done. Should keep most of them out. I'm on my way to lock off the comm center. Just make sure to leave a way out of here. Trust me, I'll get you the data safe and sound. We just need to make sure we leave enough power running so we don't have to return. I hear that. See you back at camp. How did I do that? That's what I'm wondering. Data buffer available. So did I just, like, tap into the data buffer? How? Oh, God. Is that oil? What is that goop? What's her light switch for this place? It's so grim and dim. Oh, little boxes of noodles, spinach, rice, curry mix. See you hiding in there. Ah, it's stuck. Home is a state of mind. And also a place. A place that is definitely not here. Robot dock, service station, and storage this way. Did I just come from inside here? Do I want to actually unlock it then? I don't think I have much of a choice. I don't think there's anywhere else I can go. Nope. This is 
like... It's like roots growing, except it seems not biological. It's like robotic roots or something, almost. Or it's biological, but it's interfaced with technology. It's hard to tell. It's very strange. Very, very strange. I feel like one of these things is going to wake up and just, like, grab me or something. Uh, whoa. Just had, like, visual distortions. Hmm. Is it really not a light switch for this place? Maybe the lights are just broken. I think that one might be alive. Hey you. Can you talk? Can you talk like the others? Why are you like this? Some structure gel? Yeah, you do. So weird. Doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna shut you down now, okay? Yeah, you're creepy as hell, so I'm gonna shut you down. What the hell is that? Looks like it's right in the hallway. It just busted through the door, didn't it? It did. That thing's gotta be really freaking strong. Jesus. How did I hear that? I touched the I touched the robot. And then I heard, like, an audio log, or an audio recording. I don't know, it didn't sound really like an audio log, it just sounded like something that happened to be recording while, while that woman was doing something. You know, it wasn't like she was making a log, unless she just happened to be recording everything. Can I hear it again? Yeah. Can you talk? Can you talk? Am I interfacing with the robots? Or something? How can I possibly do that? Am I a robot myself? Or is it because I'm in a simulation, so somehow I have access to other stuff because we're inside of a computer system. I don't know. Alright, well I know where I need to go. I need to follow the thing that bust busted through the wall and hope I don't meet it. But I think I'm gonna save that for the next episode. So yeah, so far I'm really freaking intrigued. It's it is everything I like about a fictional game, but even better, with like a bigger budget and it's more beautiful and it's more interactive. And I'm so freaking intrigued by the story. I'm really fascinated by the story so far. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.